Latasha, Tamika, Tiny, and Candy. They were just four ordinary teenagers from Atlanta, Georgia, who could sing. And by sing, I really mean sang. They also had an edge to them that set them apart from any other 90s female R&B act. Their group, called Escape, dominated the era with three platinum albums and a style that fused R&B and hip hop with homegrown gospel harmonies. The group's talent, however, would also become their undoing as personal rivalries tore apart their friendships and their music. Escape actually began as a quintet, featuring Candy Burris, Tamika Cottle, better known as Tiny, Tamara Coggins, and sisters Latasha and Tamika Scott. Hi, I'm Tamika Cottle. I'm Candy Burris. Tamika Scott. Latasha Scott. Tamara Coggins. And, and we, we are, are Escape. Escape. All the girls hailed from College Park, ultimately coming together while attending high school. Candy, who was in the ninth grade, Tamika, who was in the 10th, and her sister Tasha, who was in the 12th, started performing together as a trio in church. The response they got from everyone made them think that they should become an official group. Their trio then became a quartet when 15-year-old Tamara entered the picture after she and Candy met at a performing arts summer camp. They rehearsed, got their look together, and even secured a manager. They were on their way, or so they thought. Something was still missing. Enter Tiny. Tamika knew her from back in middle school and knew she could blow. So she talked to the other girls about adding her to the group. Now with the lineup complete, they needed a name. Escape seemed perfect since they consider themselves an escape from the stereotype of needing to look a certain way to sing R&B music. Next was landing a record deal. The girls hooked up with manager Jabari Abdul Samad, father of the R&B quartet, The Boys. He suggested they audition for BET's popular TV series, Teen Summit. They did, and they killed it. Hold on to your love, baby. Hold on, hold on to your love. You've got to have it. Now they were on their way, right? Wrong. Back to the talent show circuit they went while also working on their demo. Only four of the girls would get to complete that task, though. Their manager wanted Tamara out, citing her inability to sing as the reason. The decision was ultimately left up to the other girls, but he made it clear that either she goes or he goes. As we know now, Tamara did get voted out. Crazy enough, soon after she left, their manager opted to leave too. He was replaced with Ian Burke, who helped develop other Atlanta acts like Arrested Development and TLC. In early 1993, Ian got a call from a young producer by the name of Jermaine Dupree. Jermaine was already familiar with Escape since the group sang at his birthday party the year before. He was now starting his own label and looking to sign his first act. Before they knew it, Escape became that first act signed to So So Dev. Now they were finally on their way. Later that same year, the group released their debut album titled Hummin' Comin' At Ya. Recorded in just two weeks, it became a critical and commercial success, peaking at number 17 on the Billboard 200 and number three on the top R&B hip hop albums chart. Their debut single, Just Kickin' It, shot to number one on the R&B chart and stayed there for several weeks. Their second single, Understanding, made it to the top spot on the chart as well, while both tracks also became top 10 pop hits on the Billboard Hot 100. Little may people know, Jermaine was the one to dress the girls in baggy clothes in neutral colors. He wanted the focus to be on the vocals and not how sexy they could look. It couldn't have been more well received as the girls soon noticed that everywhere they went, their fans were dressing just like them. The celebration of their immediate success ended up being short-lived after finding out that Tamika was pregnant. Their manager at this time, Michael Malden, laid out her options to her. She could either terminate the pregnancy and stay in the group or have the baby and get kicked out. Tamika had no intention of doing the former, so she accepted having to leave the group. Her sister, though, wasn't having it. Tasha made it known that if Tamika left, she would too. Of course, neither Tamika nor Tasha went anywhere. Tamika had her baby and life went on. The group's second album, Off the Hook, was released in 1995. It peaked at a lower position than their debut on the Billboard 200, number 23 to be exact, but captured the same high position 
on the top R&B hip hop albums chart, coming in at number three. The lead single, Feels So Good, made it into the top 40 and became a top 10 hit on the R&B chart. When the music video for the song dropped, it was clear that the group had undergone a substantial transformation. They felt it was needed because even though their fans loved their original look, their peers in the industry definitely had a more negative opinion about it. Probably the most prominent of them all came from the notorious B.I.G. when he let loose on his 1994 track, Just Playing Dreams. According to Tiny, he later apologized, sadly just minutes before his untimely death. Tasha felt that she took the brunt of the group's criticism due to her weight and constantly being referred to as the big girl. Off the Hook's follow-up single, Who Can I Run To, did even better climbing to number 8 on the Hot 100 and number 1 on the R&B chart. Over the next couple of years, the group was featured on a number of other hit singles, including the remix version of Mariah Carey's Always Be My Baby and MC Light's Keep On Keepin' On, as well as several movie soundtracks, including Love Jones and Soul Food. As the group was dominating the charts though, dissension among the members was creeping in. To make matters worse, Tasha's boyfriend, Rocky Bivens, became Escape's new manager. Since a clear bias emerged, that arrangement wasn't going to work out with all involved, so another person was brought in to co-manage. When it was time to go back into the studio to begin work on their next project, tensions among the ladies were at an all-time high, especially between Candy and Tasha. According to Tasha's sister and Rocky, the producers that they were working with wanted her to sing lead more, which they believed didn't sit well with Candy. Eventually, Tasha just didn't want to sing altogether for fear of letting down either her group or the producers. Her next step would shake the foundation of the group to its core. She was going solo. According to Candy though, the rest of them already knew that before the recording of their third album because Tasha had told them that was her plan. Another bomb involving one of the members was about to drop as well. Candy and Jermaine were dating. Sort of. We hooked up a couple times and that was it. That was it. It wasn't that deep. Naturally, the other members didn't like the obvious conflict of interest dynamic that their involvement with each other created. Then one day during a group meeting, things between Candy and Tasha finally boiled over. According to Candy, Tasha was taking personal shots at her, going on about things that had nothing to do with music. Eventually, the verbal argument turned physical. Escape's third and to date last album, titled Traces of My Lipstick, dropped in 1998. It debuted at number 28 on the Billboard 200 and at number 6 on the top R&B hip hop album chart. It produced two top 10 pop and R&B hits, The Arms of the One Who Loves You and My Little Secret. The achievement didn't matter all that much to the group though since the animosity between everyone was the worst it had ever been and something needed to give. It was just a constant argument, negativity, fighting, just... It was just terrible by that point. All that took effect on me, mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'm not gonna sit around for you to continue to bash me and make you money and help you to get to the next position or whatever. Something inside me was just like, it's over. I'm just gonna bow gracefully. And just like that, Escape was over. Candy and Tiny attempted to make a go of things as a duo called Cat but that venture proved unsuccessful. They did, however, score their first Grammy for best R&B song for TLC's 1999 smash hit, No Scrubs, which they co-wrote. Candy signed a solo deal with Columbia and released her debut album, Hey Candy, in 2000. It ended up doing much better overseas than in the US. But what happened to Tasha's solo effort? Well, after several years apart, Tiny and the Scott sisters decided it was time to reform Escape. They also wanted Candy to rejoin. As far as she was concerned though, she didn't see the point when their past issues with one another had still not been resolved. When Candy declined, she was asked to sign over her rights to the Escape name. She did, and the original three plus new member Keisha Miles went on to do their thing. Once again though, the women's dealings with the opposite sex continued to play a major role in another inevitable demise. Tiny was now in a relationship with rapper T.I., and the other members felt he started holding her back. 
Rocky, who was now Tasha's husband, was also still holding down his position as manager, but the other members wanted to start fresh with someone new. Tasha wasn't having it, so after only a couple of years, the group disbanded. Again. The group's chances of the original quartet ever reuniting were all but dashed in 2007 after Tamika gave an interview to Hot 97 radio station in which she insinuated that Escape broke up because Candy had slept with Jermaine. She also claimed that Candy had hooked up with Jermaine's father as well as others in the So So Deaf Recordings crew. According to Tamika, it was in retaliation to years of Candy saying in interviews that her sister was the reason Escape broke up. Tamika claimed that wasn't true, while Candy doubled down and stood firm on her belief that if it wasn't for Tasha wanting to go solo, Escape would have continued making albums. She goes and dogged me out her whole entire interview and lied on me. I was so done because even though Tamika was Tasha's sister, me and her, at points, we were really, really close. And I couldn't believe she would do me like that. I really couldn't. For her to do that, it just felt like she really had hatred for me. And I just didn't want to deal with that no more. I just was like, mm-mm. I was done. Tamika took the opportunity during the filming of the group's Unsung episode in 2015 to make a public apology to Candy. In June 2017, all four original members of Escape had their first performance together in over 18 years at that year's BET Awards. Two months after that, they announced a reunion tour with stops in over two dozen cities. Two new singles titled Wifed Up and Dream Killer were also released. Later that same year, Candy indicated in numerous interviews her lack of interest in recording new music with Escape, stating that she was pursuing other artistic avenues. Consequently, Tiny, Tasha, and Tamika formed the subunit Escape, using the number three in place of the E. The trio went on to record several original songs that were later included in their 2018 EP titled Here For It. Around this time, the entire group also participated in a limited reality series called Escape Still Kicking It. In 2021, Versus presented a pre-Mother's Day battle featuring both Escape and another popular 90s female R&B group, SWV. The quartet came back together again to celebrate their Lady of Soul honor at the 2022 Soul Train Awards. However, without fail at this point, the experience had to be marred by more drama. Ahead of receiving their award, the ladies all walked the carpet wearing metallic looks. One person in particular, though, really stood out in the photos. Several people pointed out that Tasha's dress made her look like the lead singer of the group, and some even alleged that she purposely tried to steal the spotlight. She saw the internet chatter and decided to address it. On Instagram, she posted pics from the big night and noted in the caption that she, quote, didn't get the memo, end quote, about attire. Her comment prompted Candy to hop in the comments to dispel her claims. According to Candy, Tasha chose to have a separate stylist from the group, so the rest of Escape isn't to blame for the fashion faux pas. Tasha's stylist did chime in, claiming that he was not informed about the color scheme for the evening. To keep the momentum of the extra attention their versus battle gave them, Escape and SWV signed on for another reality TV experience. Their show, SWV and Escape, The Queens of R&B, premiered in March 2023. It showcased their personal and professional lives, as well as explored the idea of doing a joint tour. Tasha had, once again, distanced herself from the group the previous year, following a dispute between her husband slash manager and a promoter. She switched gears musically and began to focus on solo endeavors in the gospel genre. She also had major beef with her sister after Tamika brought up the issue of Tasha stealing her royalties. When she realized that she wasn't receiving her checks, Tamika did some digging. Lo and behold, it was because they were being deposited in her sister's husband's bank account. Escape did end up going out on tour, but did so as a trio, since Tasha decided she didn't want to be a part of it. Even though she hasn't joined Candy, Tiny, and her sister on stage in a while, they continue to maintain that Tasha is still an official member of Escape. <laughs> 